Welcome. Welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to take a look, a deep look to clamping. Clamps, the effects it has, the stabilization effects, everything that it's to it. Let's take a look. Okay, so um, I'm sure a lot of you have wondered sometimes, should I use a clamp? Should I, should I not? Is my turntable capable of dealing with that? Is it just snake oil? Does it really have any good effects? May it have a negative effect on my turntable and, and the music reproduction from my records, vinyl records? Um, it depends, that's the answer. But we'll try to analyze this and try to get a little more in depth within, within this topic. Um, I think it's important though to say that apart from warp records, which is a common problem, if you go crate digging or you buy simply used vinyl records online or uh, flea markets or whatever, uh, there is a high probability, high, high chances that you're gonna um, find slightly or, or harshly, I would say, warp, warped records, which means that the record is not uh, flat anymore. It has a disalignment within his, its, um, its, its general shape. It's, uh, the, the, the roundness and the flatness of the record is not more, it's, it's not approximately next to zero. It's never gonna be zero, actually, because that's unfortunately the problem here, because vinyl records are always gonna be slightly warped, slightly mm, not parallel to, to itself and to the platter. Hence, clamping. Um, what, what I want to put an accent on, I want to highlight, is the importance of having a flat surface on your record. The, the grooves need to be flat in order to have an optimal, a perfect music reproduction. Um, that is why, unfortunately, we have uh, a lot of work is somehow um, put over, sent to the cantilever of your cartridge, but mostly to the arm, the tone arm of your turntable. That is why tone arms have to be perfectly engineered because they need to be capable of dealing with all those warpings or micro warpings that I would say 99.9 .9 records have, unfortunately. So it is a big issue, actually. Um, and in fact, when you obtain a perfectly flat surface in your vinyl reproductions, the effects are positive, are very positive. But we'll get there. Okay, let's start to analyze the different um, types of clamping solutions that we can find. We have four main types. Let's take a look then. Okay, um, type number one the classic spindle type. What is that? Well, you have your spindle uh, in the center of your record player and you insert on top of it various solutions, which we will go more in depth afterwards. Apart from that typology, typology, type, sorry, type, type, the spindle type, type number two is the association between a spindle type and a platter type. What is that? Well, you have a clamp and um, which goes with a, a solution also studied for your platter. Um, they're not very common actually, but <clears throat> for example, we have one of uh, uh, Oyaide, probably the best. Here you can see an image. So these are, are the most common actually, um, which I believe do achieve a, a better result than a simple clamp if we're just talking of simple weight clamps, but we'll, we'll, we'll go back on that. Okay, um, type number three is um, peripheral rings. I don't know if you're common with this, but apart from clamping the center part of, the, uh, of your record, there are also other solutions that regard the outer part of your record. That's why they call peripheral or ring um, clamping. These are 
extremely expensive. In fact, I never had the joy to experience one of those, but I would really like to do that. Um, we have mainly two famous, th three examples currently in production, which is that of um, Clear Audio, which really looks like something uh, well-engineered, probably one of the best. The VPI, which is mainly studied for their turntables, but also the TTW, uh, <clears throat> which also has um, some stabilization uh, bulks around it, which enhances, theoretically, the reproduction. Um, these were much more common in the past, in the 70s, 80s. A lot of things we're going to see today are more, are, were more common in the past, unfortunately. They're not produced anymore. Since they're not produced for a high number for the mass, we have small productions, and that's why, for example, the, mm, the peripheral or ring clamping solutions are extremely, extremely expensive, unfortunately, and I think would give a lot to our experience. But I can't say I ever tried one, but I'm sure it does have positive effects. Remember though, obviously you're adding weight when you use that, a lot of weight. So you, your motor really needs to be capable of, of dealing with that amount of weight. Always check that. I will say that again afterwards when we're talking about the specific type of clamps of this video. But uh, I, want, I already want to highlight this. It is important that you have a, a very strong motor capable of dealing with a higher weight on the platter. Otherwise, you're going to burn everything. Or worse, uh, you're going to have um, uh, problems in the pitch, in the, in the velocity of the, of, the, um, of the record. Okay, um, apart from this typology, type, sorry, apart from this type of clamps, the final, num the number four, the final type, is probably the best solution. Vacuum, the vacuum solution, the vacuum type of clamp, clamping. What's that? Um, you mainly have, I would say, two types of, uh, of solution there. Uh, what, what is the concept behind vacuum clamps? It's very simple. You have your record, you put it on the surface, and according to the different solutions, the air is sucked out from beneath it, which brings to full contact the surface of the vinyl record to the platter. In that way, you're 100% sure that the record playback is perfect. The arm is not going to be stressed, the cantilever is going to go nice and even there, and that's the best of the best. For example, good old Michael Fremer, uh, I already mentioned him in another video, and he's one of the, the, the best gurus of hi-fi. He adds a continuum caliber, that's one of the typo types of turntables available today, which have integrated a vacuum solution, which is the best of the best. He has a platter, which has a lot of holes, and the air is sucked out through a motor in another room, otherwise it's going to make some, some noise, unfortunately. And that is able to suck out the air and bring the record to con in full contact with the platter. Fantastic. Um, curiously, there's also another solution that I found online. Very interesting. Which are uh, two different solutions which were uh, created by Audio Technica in around the 70s, 80s. Which is, which is the 666EX or the 665BX. What are these? Well, um, the first one, the 666, was, is uh, practically, a, we could say, a rubber chamber put underneath your record. Very flat, very thin. You put the record on top. There's a little hole on the side of this um, uh, rubber chamber where you put a, 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 suck, um, a little motor which sucks out all the air and creates a vacuum, bringing also down together with it the record and having a, a, an optimal uh, flatness of, of your record, a perfectly flat record. Um, something very similar, um, here's another picture, uh, is the, uh, the 665, which instead was based more on a, spe on a special kind of clamp, which was put on top in the center of the record with a, um, a special platter below. And as soon as you put it down and you clicked on it, it sucked out all the air coming from the center of the spindle and flattening down the record. 
But apart, apart from all this, I mean, we have these vacuum solutions, which are the best of the best. If you have the money, as I always say, go for them because that's the best. And it really does increase the sound um, resolution, the playback. How do I know? Because I remember a famous test that Michael Fremer did. And um, you can see that as soon as he activates his, uh, mm, his turntable with this suction, vacuum suction properties, the, 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 the quality of the sound is amazing. It's fantastic. There are also other tables, turntables, that, uh, um, that have these vacuum properties. Obviously, they are very, very expensive. And I have the kind of the sensation that these turntables have this excellent type of, uh, of, of, of solution to get the record flat on the platter, but the rest of the construction isn't that good. I don't know. I don't know that, obviously. It's not my experience. But just looking at the characteristics, the specs, and how the, the rest of the turntable is built, I don't know. I'm not that into it, I think. I prefer gold then to a very high quality all throughout a high quality turntable which has that. But that's going to cost at least, I don't know, $10,000, $20,000. So forget about it. In fact, we're going to go back to our clamping solutions, much more modest and budget minded. So uh, these are the four main types of clamping solutions, of clamps. We're going to focus now on the most common and the cheapest, I would say, probably. The spindle type, because that's the, the, the that's where clamps were born. I mean, that's the basic uh, type of clamp, where you just put something on top of the spindle, and it's supposed to keep the record flat. So um, in that case, coming to the, the spindle type, we have three main solutions connected to the spindle type of clamp. Um, the first solution, which is the most common that we all know about is the weight solutions. Um, there are dozens of also beautifully designed clamps, which simply just rest on top of your record and flattening it out. Um, what's the problem with these? Well, in a lot of cases, I don't know why, it's just a piece of metal, usually metal or, or wood or, or the mixture of these or magnesium. Those are probably the best, aluminum, et cetera, et cetera, different kind of minerals. Um, and they can go for crazy prices on hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But all you need, if you're just looking for some weight to push, push down your, your record, is just a, a normal piece of, of, I don't know, marble or metal, which doesn't cost that much, actually, if you think about it. So that's the most common, the most common uh, solution in spindle type of clamps. What is the problem with that? And what is the main problem of all these types of clamping solutions, excluding the vacuum, is that when you use the, the, um, the type on top, using the, 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 the spindle, the center of your record, <clears throat> unfortunately, you're, go you're gonna have a result in the center part, but in the outer part, you're still gonna have some warping. We all know that. I mean, I think a lot of you tried using a clamp. Oh, cool, it presses down, it presses down the center part, but in the outer parts, it's still flapping. So that's going to that's gonna create vibrations, mistakes in, in the tracking. So in the end, I mean, you're, you're not really affecting, you're not really um, uh, enhancing the quality of your sound. Plus, plus, if you use weight clamps, you're really putting uh, extra work on your motor. Um, you always, I already said this before, you always have to check the amount of weight that your motor is capable of dealing with. And remember to also put inside in that calculation the, the, the weight of the, of, the, of the record or anything else you have in there, because it is gonna change. I mean, if you get a, hu a huge super clamp uh, uh, weighing three kilos, yes, this is gonna completely press my, 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 my record. Yeah, it's probably not gonna, even gonna start. A puff of smoke is gonna come out of the motor. So you really have to pay attention to this. If you want to go that way, and I do not recommend that, I'll, I will tell you in the end what I recommend, uh, try to find clamps that are not too heavy. Maximum a kilo, maximum, but I would say even 600, 700 grams. Do the math to, to change the, the different kinds of ounces, gram, um, libbers or whatever you have in your country. So um, 
we have to pay attention to that because they, they are they're sold like that very easily but a lot of turntables are not capable of dealing with that okay so this was the first solution the second solution it's a hybrid solution it's not a real solution but i wanted to mention that it's mainly something like this piece of crapola um it, this is just a piece of plastic uh with a hole you're supposed to put it Maybe it has a, a little, uh, it, maybe it, it can attach directly to the, uh, to the, the record surface, but I doubt it. There's, there's always a piece of, of, of uh, paper, so it's not going to have that suction properties. But apart from that, I mean, the second, t the second solution um, is based on simple pressure. I call it simple pressure. The first one was weight. The second is simple pressure, where you just put this on the, on the spindle, and it creates a slight pressure keeping keeping down the record and the good part obviously is that you don't have that huge amount of weight because just this weights weighs only a few grams another excellent solution in fact it's called clever clamp here you can see a, a picture is that for example um produced by clear audio but even other brands made it it's just a round piece of plastic as you can see which um it kind it's the hole is slightly smaller than the spindle though it has the capability of um uh, enlarging itself so you just push it down it grasp the spindle and it, it, it will give a modest type of pressure and at the same time um the, it will not put all that weight on the motor the last solution in terms of spindle clamping types is the one I highly suggest, which I called grip, the gripping solution. And actually the best uh, types of spindle clamps do use this solution. What am I talking about? I'm talking about something like this. Um, this is a clear audio clamp, which has, um, I don't remember the, the name, I'll, I'll, I'll write it down here. And as you can see, I think you can see it, it has, See, the hole has four pieces of metal, which in, um, gr grips, grips on the spindle when you fasten it with the knob on top. So what is the, the, what is the, the genius behind this, which it, it came out, I bought this like 10 years ago, but it, it's probably, um, it's, it was probably out and about already in the 1780s. They did everything in those times, but I never heard about this until, uh, until 10 years ago, actually. Um, so as you can see, you put in the spindle here, you um, tightened, you fasten the knob, which has four metal parts which grip on the spindle. In that case, it's not going to move anymore. And if you press, if you press a little bit while you're um, fastening it, you're going to put a lot of pressure on the record. And as you can imagine, the, the good thing about it, the benefit, is that you're not putting practically zero weight, just a few grams, 100, 200 maximum, not even, 120, I think, 120 grams. And the best um, clamps uh, today regarded as the best clamps, for example, the Salta Reflex or the um, Maplinol with the, with a the big cross handle on top. Here are a few images of these. These, these go for, unfortunately, for hundreds and hundreds of euro. But there are a lot of excellent solutions which adopt the same geometry, which adopt this same um, technique, the same method to um, grasp, grip your spindle. Uh, please bear in mind, though, that your spindle cannot be that removable kind. And if it is, it really has to be tucked in. I mean, if you just have to do like this and your spindle comes away, com comes off, obviously you cannot use that, unfortunately. You cannot use this because this is going to take it out. It's going to take your spindle out of the hole. So you need a fixed or at least a firm spindle in your turntable. And that way, um, you can action, you can start um, <clears throat> fastening this, which will start to, to pull and at the same time, bring down your, your, the surface of the record. As I said, um, unfortunately, we're always going to have some problems on the outer limit. But sometimes when we really have some bad warping, at least this can help a little bit. 
if you're lucky, on eBay or, or somewhere else to find a ring, a peripheral ring, or if you have the money for a vacuum, that's the best to go. I just wanted to mention two brands, I'll show you here the images, of uh, this type of solution, this type of clamp, which have a decent price. There are mainly two types. One by Mitchell, be careful because Mitchell makes two of them. One is dedicated to his own turntables, but the other should be a, uh, better for most types. Always ask at the, at the online store or your, your dealer or whatever if it's um, compatible with your, with your turntable. You never know for the dimensions, for, for the spindle issue I told you before. Apart from Mitchell, we also have, which is around 40 euro forty dollars more or less with a similar price we also have the um the cob super record grip um yeah these are the two main we have which go around this price because otherwise we immediately immediately go to 100 200 dollars and i'm pretty sure i mean i haven't i haven't looked at them all of them together but i'm pretty sure we're having the same type of technology very, very simple, which is just grasping the, the, the spindle and bringing down our record. Okay, before closing the video, I wanted to discuss uh, a little more on different types of clamps using stabilization properties. In fact, as you have seen in the title, I've also added stabilization. Uh, what do I mean? Well, actually, there are a lot of clamps, usually the spindle type, I must say, which have also this uh, stabilization quality that should reduce mainly vibrations and dampen the uh, the overall vibrations of the record of the of the turntable and um, be almost uh, um, a way of dissipating them. So I think in a lot of uh, a lot of types, as you can see, stabilizer, stabilizer a lot of these this is the one I, I suggested you and this is the other one um a lot of these clamps are mainly weight clamps and it seems to me that in most cases not all of them absolutely most cases they try to add this stabilization uh feature in order to ask a little more money i would say or uh, make it a little more fancy a little more cool um, there are a, a few solutions that seem um, seem integrating further technology in order to attenuate, we could say, the uh, the the vibrations, the, this problem of the vibrations. This is one of the top of the tops. Um, for example, this Nasotec, uh, as you can see here, um, has as you can see, different kinds. It has these compartments that should somehow um, reduce the vibrations. For example, um, let's see. I, th I think there was also another solution. Uh, and, and as you can see, also these are very expensive because in, in most cases there are liquids or there are um, vacuums inside uh, empty spaces designed in a certain way that should be able to um, somehow, as I said, uh, reduce the vibration. So that's another another solution that they're implementing in these uh, record clamps. Some cases I'm sure they work, but in others uh, I really do think it's just snake oil. So be careful. Okay guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope the these clamps, these suggestions can help you. Please post here below your comments and please tell us if you have some suggestions in, the, in this matter. Thank you for watching as always and hope to see you soon. Bye guys.